students in this session we are going to define what is a null sequence with example we are going to prove cauchy's first theorem on limits we will also discuss the converse of cauchy's first theorem and we will discuss some problems on cauchy's first theorem on limits what is the definition of null sequence a sequence an is said to be a null sequence if it converges to zero that is limit of the nth term of the sequence an as n tends to infinity is zero what are the examples the sequences whose nth terms are 1 by n comma 1 by n square comma 1 by 2 power n comma minus 1 power n minus 1 by n are all null sequences we have some results sequence a n is a null sequence if and only if modulus of the sequence a n is a null sequence a sequence a n converges to l if and only if the sequence a n minus l is a null sequence sequence a n minus l is we have to subtract l from each and every term of the sequence if modulus of a n less than or equal to modulus of b n for all n belong to n that is here a n and b n are the nth terms of the two sequences sequence a n and sequence b n and b n is a null sequence then naturally sequence a n is also a null sequence we shall now prove cauchy's first theorem on limit what is the statement of cauchy's first theorem if limit of a n as n tends to infinity is l that is the sequence a n converges to l then limit of a1 plus a2 plus a3 so on plus an whole divided by n as n tends to infinity is also l that is the arithmetic mean of first n terms of the sequence also converges to l to prove this we need two results we will recall those two results the first one is definition of convergence sequence the sequence a n converges to l then by definition given epsilon greater than 0 there exists a natural number m such that modulus of a n minus l is less than epsilon for all n is greater than or equals to m the second definition is definition of bounded sequence a sequence a n is said to be bounded if it is both bounded above and bounded below that is there exist two real numbers k1 and k2 such that k1 is less than or equals to a n less than or equal to k2 for all n belong to n or we can choose one positive real number k such that modulus of a n is less than or equal to k for all n belong to n in fact to prove cauchy's first theorem on limit we will be using the second part that is when you say sequence a n is bounded then there exists a positive real number k such that modulus of a n is less than or equal to k for all n belong to n now the statement says sequence the limit of a n as n tends to infinity is l that is the sequence a n converges converges to l then we have to prove that 
limit of a1 plus a2 plus o1 an by n as n tends to infinity is l first we assume that an is equals to l plus bn where bn tends to 0 as n tends to infinity that is bn converges to 0 just now we learned the definition of converges to 0 that is null sequence we say a sequence is said to be a null sequence if it converges to 0 therefore here the sequence bn is a null sequence now let us check what is the limit of an see an we are taken as an equal to l plus bn so apply limit on both sides so limit of an as n tends to infinity is equals to apply limit on l so limit of l as n tends to infinity plus limit of bn as n tends to infinity here there is no n at all therefore we get l whereas here by our assumption bn is a null sequence and hence the limit of bn is 0 therefore l plus 0 is l thus the limit of an as n tends to infinity is l therefore what we have assumed here namely bn is a null sequence is correct now let us consider the arithmetic mean of first n terms of the sequence namely a1 plus a2 plus o1 plus a n by n now what is a n a n is l plus b n then what is a1 a1 will be put n equal to 1 here a1 will be l plus b1 therefore we are written a1 as l plus b1 similarly replace each and every value of a so a2 will be l plus b2 so on thus a1 plus a2 plus so on plus a n by n becomes l plus b1 plus l plus b2 plus so on plus l plus b n by n how many l's are here how many l's starting with one two up to n therefore there are one two three so on n l Therefore, we can write n l divided by n plus. Now, we will write the rest of the terms. What are the rest of the terms? The rest of the terms are b1 plus b2 plus b3 so on bn whole divided by n. This is a 1. Now, n n can cancel and hence a1 plus a2 plus so on plus an by n is L plus B1 plus B2 plus O1 Bn by N. Let us call it as 1. This is the 1 we have seen in the previous slide. Now it is enough to show that limit of this one. What is that? B1 plus B2 plus O1 Bn by N is 0. So that... The limit of the left hand side namely a1 plus a2 plus a n by n will be equals to l and hence that proves the theorem. So now our aim is to show that limit of b1 plus b2 so on b n by n is equal to 0. What is given? When you took a n is equal to l plus b n, what is b n? b n converges to 0. Since b n converges to 0 and we know that every convergent sequence is bounded. Therefore, the sequence b n is bounded. Then by definition of boundedness, there exists a positive real number k such that modulus of b n less than k for all n belong to n let us call it as 2 again 
the sequence bn converges to 0. Then by definition of convergent sequence for a given epsilon greater than 0, there exists a natural number m such that modulus of bn minus l. But what is l here? L is 0. Therefore, modulus of Bn minus 0 is less than normally we write the epsilon. But here we write epsilon by 2. There will not be any problem because the epsilon by 2 is much smaller than epsilon. Therefore, we can take epsilon by 2 without any harm. For all n greater than or equal to m, that is, that is modulus of Bn less than epsilon by 2 for all n greater than or equals to m. Students, here I would like to insist on the point in the inequality 2. Modulus of Bn is less than k for all n. It is true right from the first term. B1, B2, B3, B4, so on. When you come to inequality 3, this inequality 3 holds good from n is greater than or equal to m. That is from mth term and mth, m plus 1th term, m plus 2, so on. That is from mth term onwards, it is true. That is, this inequality is true for bm, bm plus 1, bm plus 2, so on. Now, since we want to show that limit of B1 plus B2 plus Bn, so on, Bn by N equal to 0, let us consider modulus of B1 plus B2 plus so on plus Bn by N minus 0. That is equal to modulus of B1 plus B2 plus so on plus Bn by N. N because minus 0 is nothing but 0. Now we can write the above one equation namely B1 plus B2 plus Bn by N as we are going to split here. We are going to split as two terms. How we are going to split? We are going to write from 1 to M then from M plus 1 to N that is B1 plus B2 plus so on plus Bn by N can be written as modulus of B1 plus B2 plus B3 so on plus Bm by N plus we start with Bm plus 1 plus Bm plus 2 plus so on plus Bm N by N. The value will not change. Now, what would be the next step? Look at this here. This is mod whole modulus. Whole modulus. Whereas here, we are split into two. Modulus of modulus for the first term, then modulus for the second group. Now, what we have to write here? Can we write equal sign here? Is it possible to write equal sign? No. Because we have learned that Modulus of x plus y is less than or equal to mod x plus mod y. If you consider whatever written here with red color is x and whatever written here with blue color as y, then it is of the form modulus of x plus y. This is less than or equals to less than or equals to mod x plus mod y. That is, here we are using the triangular inequality. Again, we are going to use once again the triangular inequality. In the first group, in the first group, again we apply this, this inequality, triangular inequality, then we can write the whole modulus is less than or equal to modulus of b1 by n plus modulus of B2 by N, so 1, plus modulus of Bm by N. Similarly, we can write the second group also. 
that is modulus of b m plus 1 by n plus modulus of b m plus 2 by n plus modulus of b n by n. Now, if you consider the first group, how many terms are here? There are m terms. That is here, look at this, 1, here 2, the last term is m. There are m terms. Therefore, this is equals to m. What is two equal inequality to? We will recall the inequality to. Inequality to says, since bn converges to zero, it is bounded. That is, there exists k belongs to R plus such that modulus of bn is less than k for all n belong to n. This is true. That is, for B1, we can write modulus of B1 is less than K. Modulus of B2 less than K. Modulus of B3 less than K. Similarly, for modulus of any terms of the sequence Bn is less than K. This is the one we are going to apply now. So, we are going to use for B1, B2, B3, so on, up to Bm. We are going to use this inequality that is less than K. Look at this here. Here we have modulus of B1 which is less than K. Modulus of B2 less than K. Modulus of Bm less than K. Therefore, each term, each Bi, each Bi, I is from 1 to M is less than K. There are M terms and each Bi are less than K. Therefore, we can write this as less than m into k. What about the denominator? Every term has by n and hence the whole thing that is modulus of b1 by n plus b2 by n plus o1 plus b modulus of b m by n will be strictly less than m into k by n. Why it is m into k by n? Because each bi is less than k. There are m terms. Therefore, m k by n is there in every term. Therefore, by n. Let us come to the second group. What is second group? In the second group, how many terms are there? There are n minus m terms. How it is n minus m terms? Because totally there are m terms. B1 to Bn, there are n terms. There are n. But we are split into two. That is 1 to m. The second group is m plus 1 to n. Therefore, in the second group, there are n minus m terms. Now, we will recall the inequality 3. What is inequality number 3? Since Bn, the sequence Bn converges to 0, by definition of convergence, given epsilon greater than 0, there exists a natural number m such that modulus of Bn minus 0 is less than epsilon by 2 for all n greater than equal to m or modulus of Bn is less than epsilon by 2 for all n is greater than or equals to m. That is, we can apply this inequality right from Bm term onwards. That is, it is true only for Bm b m plus 1, b m plus 2, so on. From b 1 to b m, we cannot apply this. From b 1 to b m minus 1, we cannot apply this. Therefore, from b 1 to b m, we applied inequality to from m or m plus 1 to term onwards, we are going to apply this inequality. Now see here, 
here bm plus 1 what's bm plus 1 by inequality 3 this is less than epsilon by 2 here b modulus of bm plus 2 less than epsilon by 2 modulus of bn is less than epsilon by 2 that is each bi i is from m plus 1 to n is strictly less than epsilon by 2 how many terms are there there are n minus m terms. Therefore, the whole expression can be written as less than n minus m epsilon by 2 divided by n. This is 3 from 3. Now, we are going to assume one more thing. That is m k by n. We consider m k by n as epsilon by 2. Then what happened? The above inequality becomes. Since m k by n is less than epsilon by 2, we get less than epsilon by 2. What about the second group? That is n minus m by n into epsilon by 2. Clearly, this is also less than epsilon by 2. We will see the explanation here. Since n is positive, m is positive, n minus m. Since m is, uh, m is in between from 1 to n, 1 to n. See here, in between from 1 to n, n minus m is less than n. Now, bring this n to the other side. Then we get n minus m by n is less than 1. Now multiply both sides by epsilon by 2. Since epsilon by 2 is positive. Because epsilon is positive and the epsilon by 2 is also positive. Therefore when you multiply this inequality by a positive number epsilon by 2. The inequality has not changed. And hence... But n minus m by n epsilon by 2 is also less than epsilon by 2. Therefore, for this term also we are going to write plus epsilon by 2. We know that epsilon by 2 plus epsilon by 2 is less than equal to epsilon. That is modulus of b1 plus b2 plus o1 plus bn by n is Strictly less than epsilon. That's the one. Less than epsilon. For all. What about n? What about n? Now we'll discuss the nature of n. Since we have already assumed the previous slide. M k by n is less than epsilon by 2. From this, we are going to get the value of n. Now, let us cross multiply. mk is less than n epsilon by 2. Now, bring this 2 to the side. Therefore, 2 mk is less than n into epsilon. Let us bring epsilon to the left hand side. Therefore, 2 mk by epsilon is less than n because all are positive here. 2 is positive, m is positive, k is positive and the epsilon is also positive. Therefore, we have the same inequality. That is, n is greater than 2mk by epsilon. So, now what we do? It is true. This inequality is true for all n greater than 2mk by epsilon. That's a one here. Now, let m1 be a positive integer greater than this value. What is that? 2mk by epsilon. Because we want to eliminate epsilon here. To eliminate epsilon, we choose m1. m1 is greater than 2mk by epsilon. So that, so that mk by n is less than epsilon by 2 epsilon by 2 and 
n is greater than this value. That is, n is greater than 2mk by epsilon. But what is m1? m1 is greater than 2mk by epsilon. By the choice of m1, now n is greater than or equals to m1. There are two m's here. Two m's here. We have chosen m in the case of conversion. A sequence bn converges to 0. There we have chosen this m. Now we have chosen another m. That is namely m1. m1 is greater than 2mk by epsilon. To prove this, that is limit of b1 plus b2 plus o1 bn by n is equal to 0, we choose one of them, either m or m1. Therefore, let us take, let p be maximum of m and m1. And again we recall, in the case of convergent sequence, we always choose the maximum. Maximum. Now, therefore, modulus of B1 plus B2 plus B3, so on plus Bn by N minus 0 is less than epsilon for all N greater than N greater than or equals to this P. What is P? P may be M or it may be M1. Whichever is greater. If M1 is greater, P value is M1. If P, M is greater, P value will be M. Apply limits. That is, by definition of convergent sequence, limit of B1 plus B2 plus O1 Bn by N is equal to 0. That is, see here, since we already assumed that A1 plus A2 plus O1 An by N is L plus this. Now what happened? When you take limit on both sides, this limit is 0. This limit is 0. Therefore, hence we get limit of A1 plus A2 plus O1 An by N is equals to L. That is, if the sequence An converges to L, then limit of A1 plus A2 plus O1 plus An by N is also L. This completes the theorem.